everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another video in my holiday card series. This is for day 16, and today I'm going to be showing you a card made using products from the Simon Says Stamp Holiday Kit. This is a special card kit that they come out with once per year, and it's a phenomenal kit. There are so many supplies included. I'm not even going to be showing all of them on screen here at the beginning of the video because there are so, so many. Um, I took it as a challenge for myself to just play with some of these products. And I was really intrigued by that Ranger texture paste, as well as the tree stencil from Tim Holtz, and then that loose glitter. That glitter is rock candy distress glitter. And I thought it would just be really fun to combine all of those products onto a card. So I'm starting out with some Desert Storm cardstock. This is the 100 pound version. And I decided to use Desert Storm as opposed to using just a white cardstock because I really wanted the white texture paste to stand out on top of these trees. Um, I, I've never done this technique before or tried to do this before, so I didn't know how it would turn out. So I'm going to walk you through the entire process. So first I stenciled on the larger tree and I just used some post-it tape to protect the other uh, tree stencil areas so I wouldn't accidentally get any ink on those. And that first tree, I used the bundled sage ink pad, but I somehow mixed up my blending foams and I used the pine needles blending foam for that one. So that tree's a little bit darker than bundled sage, but it worked out great because then that meant that I could just use those two colors and stencil on three trees and kind of get three different colors of green. I thought that looked really cool. So now I'm gonna take my texture paste and I'm using this really inexpensive palette knife from Ranger and I'm going to be applying the texture paste as if it was uh, snow on top of these trees. Now, as I was going through this whole process of applying the texture paste on top of these trees, there were a couple things that I really wanted to let you guys know about and, and talk you through it because um, come to find out, my experience with this was a little bit different. It would be hard to recreate. In fact, I tried to recreate it and I couldn't do it successfully. So I'm just gonna try to explain what I did and then hopefully if you guys wanna try it, um, what I learned will help you out. So the first thing I noticed when I was applying this texture paste was that my jar of texture paste was pretty dry. I think that's why I was able to manipulate it in the way that I am uh, doing now um, to really have a, a little bit more of a stiff texture to the texture paste. Um, in the past when I've used texture paste, it's not as dry. It's a little bit more wet and it might not be able to be smeared or smudged like this quite as well. So um, I just wanted to mention that, that it's very, very dry texture paste. And I'm also, I'm not really going over each area too much. And the reason why was I knew that that distress ink would reactivate with something wet put on top. And I didn't want the color to start bleeding into that white texture paste and not have it look like white snow. So I'm trying to not go over the areas too, too much. So I'm going to go ahead and start in on this third tree. And this third tree I think is meant to look like there's um, like blank areas for the snow. So I was really trying to fill in those gaps, but it was particularly difficult. So um, I think if I was to try to do this scene of trees for a third time because I did do it two times I think I would probably skip this tree just because it was a little bit hard to have it still look like a tree with all those gaps I think it needed a little bit more color underneath to um, help it read like a tree so I think I might skip this tree next time around but at this point, I was just making sure that all of the trees had enough snow on them to really fill out any of those gaps and make it look purposeful and finished. So I'm using the edge of that knife to really get in there. And I'll walk you through um, how like a better technique for doing all this on some trees when I show you the second card that I made. So I'm just finishing all of those. And after I had all of the texture paste applied, I thought it would be really fun to sprinkle on some of that rock candy distress glitter. So I'm opening up the little baggie and I'm just going to sprinkle that right over the top. I'm letting the glitter fall into a coffee filter 
I sometimes use these coffee filters for embossing powders and things like that. I like them because I can just crinkle them up and throw them away. I don't have to uh, save them or worry about that glitter getting everywhere. So I realized that it looked really weird without snow beneath the trees. So I'm going to smear on a really thick snow bank underneath these trees. And it's going to finish the scene and make it look a little bit more finished. So at this point, I was thinking ahead. I was like, okay, well, how am I going to turn this into a card? Like, where am I going to put a greeting? What am I going to do to finish off this entire area? Because I did want it to be a card. If you wanted it to just be a small art piece that maybe you put in a frame, you definitely could. I think this has some qualities that are like that. But I really wanted to finish it off as a card. So I was thinking, okay, I can put the greeting there at the bottom. So that's why I left that bottom area completely free of any texture paste. Sprinkling on more of that rock candy distress glitter and just shaking that off. And then I took a stamp set from Simus Says Stamp. Um, I do not recall the name of this stamp set, but I'll have it down in the supply section below. And in that stamp set, there's a little tiny stamp that says Happy Winter. And I thought it went perfectly with my tree scene. So I'm using my mini misty tool to position that stamp at the bottom of my card and then I'll swing over the door and pick up that stamp. And I'm going to do some white embossing with the stamp so I'm going to prep that area with the powder tool, an anti-static powder tool, and then ink up my stamp with Versamark and then swing that door over to stamp my sentiment. I coated my sentiment in Hero Arts white embossing powder and then I used a heat tool to heat that up and melt it till it was completely smooth. And I was very, very careful not to apply too much heat because I knew that heat was very close to the texture paste and I didn't want any um, bubbling up of the texture paste. So I'm using my Uniball Signo Broad white gel pen to add some snow around the trees. And then I used a ruler and also the pen to draw in two lines at the very bottom. So my card base is made out of some Nina Solar White 110 pound cardstock and I just created a top folding card and then I glued down or adhered down that tree piece using some foam adhesive. I realized that the, the area around the trees needed a few more snowflakes so I added some more with my white gel pen. So that is the finished card. I'm going to quickly show you my second attempt at these trees and I'll tell you a little more about what I learned. So I stenciled on to some fog cardstock. This is Simus Stamp Fog cardstock. So again, I'm using a non white uh, cardstock for this scene. And then I went into the texture paste again. And the way I started doing this was you're kind of coming in at an angle and then sweeping up. So I'm gonna kinda squish it down on one side and then sweep up. Okay, here's about where I discover my technique. So from here on out, I'm gonna try to use that squish down and then sweep up. So I'm, that's how I'm kind of getting these different little um, tree bow shapes. So I also switched to a different palette knife. This is um, a Grumbacher I think it's, that was the brand that it, that it is. And it just has a little bit more of a point to it. And I found it a little bit easier to make these uh, kind of shapes. I also, after I had them on, I kind of went over the centers of the trees to make them a little bit less uniform. So you're gonna see me kind of do that squish and flick method a few more times. And after I have kind of both sides of the tree done, I'm going to go back over and kind of mess up that center area a little bit just so that it doesn't look so perfect. So I'm putting on all of those boughs of snow, squishing that on, and then I'm going to kind of mess up the center. Okay, so the thing that I learned with this test, my second test of doing this technique, was that that distress ink really can come up and bleed into the texture paste. My first card, I'm not sure what made it so that I was able to have pure white texture paste because with this one, particularly on that brighter green tree, um, over about a day of this drying, it bled all into that texture paste and turned all the texture paste on top of that tree a very lightly tinged green color. 
So really, really odd. The other four trees in this picture were fine. The ones that used uh, pine needles and bundled sage seemed to be fine, but I added some uh, peeled paint for on that bright tree. And I don't know why, but it just really bled into that texture paste. So I asked Tim Holtz about it. I was texting him about it and he said, you know, try grit paste. And there's grit paste in that kit. So I think if I was to do this again, I might try grit paste or I might switch to a different type of ink that might not bleed as much. So if you guys wanna try this technique out, I would suggest doing uh, one of those two things. So those are the cards for today. Hope you guys enjoyed and enjoyed my experiment coming up with this. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.